Hi guys, welcome back. Let's get our skills brushed up with a PayPal payment integration in Android. For any e-commerce app, a need for a fully functional and effective payment system is so much essential. We have lots of payment gateway for mobile and web out there. For the sake of this tutorial, we will be streamlining to the PayPal payments SDK for Android. Let's get started. We are still building up on the fragrance cards application this time we we'll talk about the integration of the PayPal payments uh, system in the build gradle if uh, you notice we included the PayPal Android SDK 2.15.3 this dependence is very important because we get to use the payment activity class from this library and some other PayPal integration Afterwards, you synchronize Gradle and get that set up. We'll be added straight to the cart activity. This is where we actually trigger the checkout, where we call the PayPal service for payment. I'll be taking you through on how this actually look like. Firstly, you need to set up your account. So I'll be added straight to the developer.paypal.com forward slash developer forward slash applications you have to have a PayPal account so if you don't have one please sign up for one after that come back to the developer session of the PayPal you will notice that you have a dashboard of this uh, nature you can easily get that from the top bar you click on the dashboard you have this uh, setup and in the dashboard you strike on the my apps and credentials once you have that, you have this interface, the My Apps and Credentials, that's the Express Checkout via Braintree SDK, that's using the uh, third party SDK. We are not using that. We're going to actually focus on the REST API apps, where you're going to create an app to receive the REST API credentials for testing and live transactions. If you are building, if you're integrating PayPal into your application, it's recommended to start with a mock data. Afterwards, you move to the sandbox and from there, you can push to live production. So from here, you need to create an app, fill the app, give the app name, give the type, uh, the, the kind of REST API call you want. If you notice, I have two applications here, the Delaware Shopping and the Integration. But we needed something very important in this uh, aspect. Let me click on the Delaware Shopping so that we'll get to see more about the details. So log into your dashboard. I've been logged out, so I need to log in. That's part of the security of PayPal. So with this, I'll get logged in into the dashboard and I could continue to visualize the app right there. Cool, I'm logged in right there into the Delaware Shopping dashboard. If you notice, I have the Sandbox account and also the client ID, very important. I'll have to copy this and save it somewhere probably in the text editor. And right there, I'm in the sandbox environment. Once you're ready to push to production, you can click on the live. In this aspect, PayPal is going to assess your application and is going to actually grant you the permission to roll live. So you have to copy the client ID somewhere, which we'll be using right there in the course of the application. Back to Android Studio. We have a PayPal configuration where we give, it's a static configuration anyway, where we give an object of config. You have to instantiate with the new PayPal configuration. It's advisable to start with mock environment. When you're ready, you can switch to sandbox or live environment. I have that commented out so you can easily know how to actually declare that. We have the PayPal configuration that environment no network. 
and our client ID. You have to pass in the client ID you copied and you paste it right here. So you have that set up. Let's scroll down to the payments click. This is a method that has been triggered anytime you click on the checkout. You have the payment intent sale which will cause the payment to complete immediately. You can change the payment intent sale to either the payment intent authorized to only authorize payment and capture funds later or payment intent order to create a payment for authorization and capture later via calls from your server. That's if you are integrating your server to the payment integration. We have a paper payment right here with an object of payment which has been instantiated with a new paper payment. Now we want to use this. But we need to pass in some parameters into this constructor of the PayPal payments. The first is the big decimal where you have to pass in the total price. In previous lessons, we've talked about how we got the total price. So you pass that into that uh, brace. And the second parameter is going to be the currency involved, USD. You can decide to pick your local currency if you like. And the third parameter here will be the purpose of payments. So big payment for items ordered. So you can construct that to suit what you feel like or what you need it for. And the last one will be the payment intent sale. This is the kind of payment we are picking out, which is actually going to cause the payment to complete immediately. I think I've said that earlier. You can decide to use the payment intent authorized or the payment intent order. We create an intent which has this class, which is the cart activity, and is actually going to push down to the payment activity class. This is out of the box from the PayPal SDK. Now you need to send the same configuration for restart resiliency, where you need to put extra. Now we have some keys that are present in the payment activity. The first one is the paper configuration, the extra paper configuration. And the value will be the config, which is actually uh, your client ID. The second extra you'll be putting right there is the extra payment, the kind of payment you are actually initializing. And the key, the value will be the payment, which we have right there. So you need to start activity for results, pass the intent and an it's zero index. So in any start activity for results, you are expecting to override the callback, which is the on activity result. And in this method, we have three parameters, the request code, the result code, and the intent data. Now you need to test if the result code is okay these are what you're expecting. Is it that it's the result okay, the result cancelled, or the result extras invalid? Now, if the result is okay, you call the payment confirmation. You get the pass label extra based on the data of the intent, and you pass the extra result confirmation, which is actually a static right there in the payment activity. Now, if the confirm is not equals to null, definitely that's a success. You try to log this to the console. And in this process, you can do something here. You can confirm and send a success message to your server for verification. So you need to catch a JSON exception which are, you also log that right there to the console. That's an extremely unlikely failure occurred. Probably if this JSON are actually didn't build up correctly. So that is if the result code is okay. As if, if the result code is cancelled, that's the result you got is cancelled, you can decide to undo the result here. So we just log that to the console. We also have another callback 
if the result code is a result extras invalid, you can also undo the error message right there. So that's just the structure behind integrated PayPal. This, this is a one-off payment. You pay once and you have your uh, verification. So I will actually employ you if you're actually dealing with a real-life scenario. It's always good to attach your server down here so that you'll be able to confirm verification. You'll be able to confirm payment. So you push the results down to your server and at the same time, you show gracefully to the user that they've actually uh, paid for something. Definitely, there will be a login to authenticate the user. So from there, you can be able to identify a particular user. And once payment is made, the credentials of that user will also be sent to the server. So you can actually do that to make it robust. And at the same time, I want you to follow all standards so that you won't fall into fraudulent developers or fraudulent people. So with this analysis, you can get yourself started with PayPal SDK integration into your e-commerce application. Be free to use the source. And at the same time, if you think you've already tested and you're okay with what you have, can move to sandbox and also you can also move to production thank you guys for hanging out with me throughout this full fragrance e-sharp i call it it's a lot we actually talked about so much and we've covered virtually everything we need to know when it comes to a shopping cart system does that it's excluding some authentication which will be done if you really need a real life project to be done but with this you're good to go thank you guys and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel have a wonderful time sticking with the Larry studios bye bye for now